Yeah. So thankfully, the good news story is not over. Isaiah 10, 12. So it will be that when the Lord has completed all his work on Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, he will. Oh, that's interesting. Qualifier for when he decides to return, huh? Mm hmm. So it's, <laughs> he says, I go to prepare a place for you. I guess he's been at it for 2000 years. That's amazing, right? It's going to be an amazing place. Many mansions. Many. It takes a while to build. Mm -hmm. uh, it says, I will punish the fruit of the arrogant heart of the king of Assyria and the pomp of his hardiness. Okay. All so right. qualifier of day of the Lord, right? Coming with Mount Zion, New Jerusalem, as we see Revelation 21. We're definitely going to do an episode about that here on the first season, the kingdom come. And uh, this is talking about in that time, there's the king of Assyria will be punished. Mm -hmm. So we've been showing that king of Assyria this whole, whole night as identified as the beast of Revelation. But he will be punished. Can you think of a can you think of a verse in Isaiah, Ezekiel, or Jeremiah where King Nebuchadnezzar is called the king of Assyria? Not that I'm aware of. No, sir. He's, al he's always called the king of Babylon, right? Mm -hmm. Because Babylon eventually took over the area of Assyria. So in the days of Isaiah, Assyria and, and, and Babylon were two separate provinces, if you will. Yeah. And uh, Babylon ends up taking over Assyria between the days of Isaiah and Jeremiah. And King Nebuchadnezzar is always called the king of Babylon. He's never called the king of Assyria. So I think it's interesting that um, just in case there's people out there going, but wait, Sean, how do you know it's not talking about like when the Lord completed his work on Mount Zion in Jerusalem, meaning like the invasion of King Nebuchadnezzar who destroyed the, t the temple and the city of Jerusalem during the days of Ezekiel and Jeremiah um, because he's not called the king of Assyria, guys. He's called the king of Babylon. That's where he actually grew up and was raised up um, in his throne of power. Uh, so this is a pretty clear distinction. Isaiah 31, 7 through 8, For in that day every man will cast away his silver idols and all his gold idols, uh, which your sinful hands have made for you as a sin, and the Assyrian will fall by a sword not of man. And a sword not of man will devour him. So he will not escape the sword, and his young men will become forced laborers. Go ahead. Habakkuk 3, 12 to 13, he goes on to say, In indignation you march to the earth, in anger you trample the nations. You went forth for the salvation of your people, for the salvation of your anointed. You struck the head of the house of the of the evil to lay him open from thigh to neck. Selah. So that's pretty wild. Lay him open from thigh to neck. That sounds serious. That sounds like yeah. he is taken out and sliced up. That's by right. That sword of fire, not of man. Micah, Micah 5, 5. 4 and 6. Do you want this? Sure. And he will arise and shepherd his flock. The he here is our Messiah. He will shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, right? In his authority. And they will remain because at that time he will be great to the ends of the earth. This one will be our peace. But when the Assyrian invades our land, when he tramples on our citadels, right, tramples down the city for 42 months, then he will raise against him seven shepherds and eight leaders of men. They will shepherd the land of Assyria with the sword, the land of Nimrod at its entrances. And he will deliver us from the Assyrian when he attacks our land and when he tramples our territory. Amen. That's right. I was well, never, I just never knew, man, for the first you know, year or so that I was studying scripture and I was uh, hearing these different interpretations. I fell for one that, that said it was the Roman Catholic church was the beast and that the, the Sunday law was going to be the mark and these things. And I just was not aware of these passages that make it so clear pinpoint and by name, even in the land of Nimrod, it says, right? Yeah. This is why I've always joked and said like people, they come into the faith and they, you know, they get saved and they hear this fire and brimstone message where the preacher's preaching out of revelation. Mm -hmm. They go home and try to read Revelation, not understanding the thing because they haven't studied the front of the book where it explains all these concepts mentioned in Revelation. That's right. You know, when I was a kid, I was 10 years old, I read the book of Revelation for the first time and I had nightmares afterwards because mm. I thought, you know, I didn't know what I was reading, right. but I was told by preachers preaching it that this is the end times and this is the prophecy for the future. So, one uh, of the first things I saw though is there were several mentions of the people that overcome. The mark of the beast are keeping the commandments of God. That was one of the that's first right. things I'm in. I noticed, and I'm like, okay, that's end times events. Yeah. Then, what are the commandments of God? Because I, I feel like that's important for us to learn. <laughs> that's right. That's what I went to.